All right, let's talk to Pete Futek, collegefootballnews.com, at Pete Futek on Twitter. What is going on, Pete? How are you? I'm doing just fine. How you guys been? Uh, doing great, man. Doing great. Uh, do you count it down the way we do? I mean, the off season can't go fast enough down here. Um, <laughs> considering it's what I do, I should be. I stressed out about that because I don't think there's enough time. Like right now, for me personally, this is where I. It's kind of my fun time of year because this is when it really is diving into all the teams and really starting the preview process later than ever this year. Uh, and it's crazy because of the transfer portal and because it's it, good luck it, because as soon as the depth charts come out, if they come out after uh, spring ball, everything's going to change because God help you if you've got a quarterback you want to hang on to and he's all of a sudden number two on your depth chart, someone's going to come try to grab him. So yeah. uh, it's a kind of a new world now than we've dealt with before. For good and for bad, but uh, uh, we'll see how this shakes out. But in the past, you kind of knew right now pretty much uh, the lay of the land as soon as the uh, uh, spring ball finished up and who's healthy, who's not where the position tra- uh, deals are. This year, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. Yeah, we were talking about that just before you came on, and Pete's with us on the JohnstonRVCenter.com hotline. Uh, we played some sound. Obviously, Bo Nix, people around here are still keeping up with him. He's a state kid, played at Auburn. But Dan Lanning was talking about him. Obviously, we don't think he would name him the starter because it's not likely Bo Nix is going to transfer again, but somebody behind him might. That's the game you got to play as a coach right now. Even if you have to go to Bo Nix and say, look, you know, I think you're the starter, but I want so-and-so to remain engaged. That's just kind of what you have to do in coaching now. And it stinks because you can't be honest with these guys. And, like, because if you're a coach – Look, these guys, no matter who they are, honestly do want the best thing possible for these players and these kids, but you got a job to do. And what you don't want is if you've got a Bo Nix, you know, at worst, he's a great backup to have. But you also know that if you say, hey, look, we're going to probably go a different direction, that, yeah, Bo Nix might transfer. And it happens. You know, it happens all the time where, you know, guys, you go transfer one place, it didn't work out. I think UCLA last year had like 19 different quarterbacks who kept flowing through there. I mean, like that's just kind of part of the deal now. So get ready for the, the term and the phrase, well, this will be settled in fall camp. Because by that point, it's a little bit harder to do. Uh, it's a little bit harder to free agency this up. And, you know, forgetting the fact that these guys actually should actually care about what school they go to to, like, learn and things. <laughs> uh, they don't want to have to transfer. So uh, the thing that, the, that these guys are going to have to do is just kind of keep this open and just keep saying over and over and over and over and over again, well, we'll settle this in fall, and you're going to see depth charts with, you know, Bo Nix or, you know, Blank or Butterfield or Blank and on from there. Yeah, Nick Saban, I think, invented the word or on depth charts. Uh, Pete Futak is with us, collegefootballnews.com. Always a great place to get any information you need leading in uh, to the college football season, as, as Pete's alluding to there, especially this time of year when you're counting down the 149 days to week zero. The information is daily, sometimes multiple times a day that you get just new stuff there. Pete's working through a series right now called 22 Thoughts, for 2022 and uh, i've seen the first three 22 21 and 20 i love number 21 pete texas and oklahoma you really want the sec (laughs) question mark because i don't know where you think texas and oklahoma is right now uh, as far as their uh, firm footing as programs but the sec is that light in the tunnel coming down the tracks pretty soon they better get it right before they join this league i don't get it uh, on absolutely any possible level other than possible business-wise, and even that doesn't necessarily work uh, like I think it probably should. Uh, because, you know, look, from a, fo- from a fan standpoint, from a football standpoint, it, look, you know, it's not like Texas and Oklahoma have been lighting up the national championship world, and these are programs that do honestly think and can think National championship or bust every year. They they're that good. They've got the facilities. They're bound by nothing. They are. They've got the the high end ability to be in the college football playoff discussion every single year. Uh, but as you guys know better than anybody else, you can be awesome in the SEC and win absolutely nothing. I mean, look the look at Texas A and M. 
Texas A&M had stayed in the Big 12, it would have been in the college football playoff by now. And it's won a lot of big things. It's won a lot of games. Looks great. Hasn't gotten to the uh, SEC championship and hasn't gotten to the college football playoff. You know, the whole Texas is back thing. Well, ask Tennessee how long it might take for a superpower to be, quote, back. You know, it's just not that easy. And, you know, just because you get these two superpower, you know, caliber business-wise programs coming in, it doesn't necessarily mean that Alabama is going to quit playing football. Or, you know, one year it's going to be LSU, one year it's going to be Auburn, one year it's going to be Georgia, one year it's going to be Florida. It's just hard to have that sustainability. And for these two programs, these two schools, Texas would be a far, far better fit for the Big Ten in terms of academics, in terms of size, in terms of every aspect, the whole Tier 1 research school. I, they just ne- they were never able to quite put it together when they started talking several years ago, and uh, they certainly didn't do it now. And I've always kind of thought, why Oklahoma and the Pac-12 didn't land that plane? There were so many discussions about that a few years ago, but for an Oklahoma uh, school for in terms of uh, just upping the overall profile and brand with those media markets, with that part of the country, and for uh, the Pac-12 to move east just a little bit. Uh, that would have been just a great fit for those two. Um, and for the SEC academics, you know, look, honestly, to be tough here, it's a step down for Texas. And uh, for football-wise, it's just you're not going to start winning national championships now that you're in the SEC. To your point, and, and Pete Futek is with us, collegefootballnews.com, at Pete Futek, just the difference in the conferences. And look, this is, could be difference in two schools, but one happens to be in the Big 12, one's in the SEC. Gus Malzahn and Mike Gundy are the same guy. They're the same guy. <laughs> yeah. Except Gus Malzahn has been better against his in-state rival, who's been a college football power, than Mike Gundy has. Mike Gundy basically has had a lifetime deal at Oak State, and Gus Malzahn is fired. I mean, they're the same guy, Pete. How about even worse than that? Look, you can't have a bad three weeks. Like, look at look at Dan Mullen at Florida. They almost you could have made a really reasonable argument that had they pulled off that SEC championship win two years ago, and they certainly pushed that epic Alabama team to the wall in that game. They deserved. They would have deserved a spot in the college football playoff. They probably wouldn't have gotten it, but they would have earned that spot. They had a two-point conversion right there for the taking to take that to at least push Alabama to overtime this year. And all of a sudden, they kind of had a little bit of adjustment in philosophy. And this is after a year where they lose the entire offense of stars from the year before. They had to do a complete overhaul. It was going to be a bit of a rebuilding year. They changed everything up. They had a bad few weeks, and then the guys fired. You know, look at, you know, I mean, I know there are other issues involved here, but I know Ed Orgeron, look, Ed Orgeron had arguably the greatest team in the history of college football three years ago, at least the greatest season, one of the greatest seasons ever, gone a couple years later. You know, you, you can't lose in this league ever. And you, you just, it, to, to, win, to have a 10 and 2 season be considered somewhat of a disappointment or even at the highest of high levels, and again, you guys know it's better than I do, by any measure, Alabama had an amazing, unbelievable year last season. They won the SEC championship. They got to the college football playoff. And we could argue you know, there, but for a Jamison Williams injury, maybe they pull that off. And yet it's, it seems like something, like, oh, they didn't win the national championship. What a disappointment. I mean, that's what you're dealing with here in this kind of league that's just got these insane expectations that just raise everyone's games up. couple more questions with Pete Futek, College Football News, who's with us on the JohnsonRVCenter.com hotline. Part of the show today being brought to you by our friends at Champy's World Famous Fried Chicken, open for lunch now, Highway 119 in Alabaster. Uh, Pete, I don't know if you like tamales, but uh, the Mississippi sure. Delta recipe tamale sure. at Champy's Chicken. Let's go. Is, is, Let's go. I mean, it's to die for chicken on a stick, everything you want, champyschicken.com. They'll cater your office parties and your tailgate. He likes it all. He likes it all. 
likes it all. Chicken, all chicken on a stick. Yeah. You just, want it all. Just read the I'm menu to Pete. Fine. He's all in. Yeah, well, I mean, we're going to make Sterling go broke. We're going to ship all this stuff to all of our guests every time we do a read. They all want it. Uh, uh, Pete, Pete we're, I mean, we're spoiled here. We've got Alabama. We've got Auburn. We've got UAB moving to the American. Few people know this, but we've got two Sunbelt teams in our, in our area down here in Troy in South Alabama. I'm so excited about this new look Sunbelt with Marshall coming over and Southern Miss and Old Dominion and James Madison. You write about James Madison today joining the league. This is an FCS powerhouse, if you will, jumping into a conference that already has App State and Louisiana and Arkansas State and Georgia Southern Troy. This is really good football, the Sun Belt. The biggest shocker so far in this whole expansion thing is that how if you could just sort of see the forward thinking process with some of these conferences and you know like, like for example the you know just going to higher level the big 12 how they didn't get ucf uh in houston and cincinnati like five years ago is insane how they didn't go get south florida too and just get that i4 corridor it's kind of nuts but and, and you would have thought that okay well you know coastal carolina is going to get picked off certainly louisiana is going to start to get picked off and you know, remember that this is about a business deal. It's about the fan bases. It's about the, you know, TV market doesn't necessarily matter anymore in the streaming world, but it is about the, you know, the interest level. And the Sun Belt just took, you know, a Marshall team with a fan base. I could tell you, you know, anecdotally from page, page views and interest, anything Marshall, Marshall fans will go do anything. James Madison fans right now are insane, you know, excited because their school is making this big move up. You know, there is a, uh, a rabid group of fans for these teams that are really into their, their sport. And like you said, all of a sudden, you know, the Sun Belt, it's not going to be the SEC. It's not going to be Big Ten football, but it's a good, you know, conference that all of a sudden in this environment just expanded, thrived, and got a whole lot stronger and better. All right, he is Pete Futek. Go read all of his work there on collegefootballnews.com. At Pete Futek on Twitter is where you follow him. Pete, we greatly appreciate the time. Always fun talking with you. Yeah, you can you like fax me over some tamales or no something? No doubt, yeah. 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 So you stand right by that fax machine. Over, right? Yeah, we'll shoot them over. Thanks. Exactly. Thanks, Pete. Take yeah. care. Later, guys. I assume Sterling would ship tamales. I don't know how they hold up in the shipping process. They'd probably do it, though. Uh, Pete on the JohnstonRVCenter.com hotline. <laughs> 